you've made it. It's the final nugget of the CCNA Voice series. Well, last, I guess, real nugget, if you will, because I, I think I'm going to add a test prep after this one. I just have, have a feeling I will. Um, but I, I saved the best product for last. It's the Cisco UC500, or what Cisco calls their Cisco Smart Business Communication System. You hear that marketing language all day. The ultimate all-in-one data de vo and voice device. Now this is the box that we talked about, I think, in one of the first few nuggets of this entire series of small business solutions of 50 users or less. So I'd like to review, to start things off, why this box is so amazing. Then we'll walk through the Cisco Configuration Assistant, which gets this running, and then become familiar with the UC500 configuration tabs. Now I, I will fully admit to you, this nugget is primarily for test preparation. The reason why, I'm going to review, I'm going to show you why this, this is a great box, and it is. It's, it's a killer solution for a small business, but it's really CME and CUE in a box. So what am I going to show you that's new that you haven't seen in this whole series on how to configure CME, how to set up CUE? Well, it's the configuration assistant and configuration tabs. In marketing to a small business environment, Cisco wanted this system to be very easy to use. They didn't want to have people in the command line configuring ePhones and ePhone DNs. They wanted people to be able to put this in place and get a nice little graphic interface that pops up and says, oh, here's how you set up your phone system. So unfortunately, and I, I'm not a fan of this, but Cisco has allowed a lot of the, the configuration tabs to bleed onto the certification exam, as in, what would this tab do, and what does this field do on this tab? And So we're going to go through the tabs, just so you're prepared and you've seen this interface before, and you can be prepared to answer those questions when you get there. So to review, why is the UC500 awesome? Well, it's awesome because it is designed as a small business solution in an all-in-one micro-sized packed box that can handle both voice and video, well, voice and video, I'm, here I am speaking Cisco marketing speak, voice and data networks, I guess you could run video over it too, all in one system. So it handles up to about 50 phones, 8 to 48. It does integrated voicemail and auto attendant, that's the CUE portion, has an external music on hold port. That's this guy right here. It's a little headphone jack, so if you've got a CD player or, you know, a record player or whatever you want, you can stream music into this, so it's got outside music on hold sources. FXO modules, that's these, for outside analog connections. FXS modules for analog phone connections, so it, it's got FXO, FXS, and now, you know, in the initial opening nugget to the series, probably didn't understand that. Now you understand what those are. You can even buy a T1 module for some of the uh, UC500 models. So if you do have a business that starts growing and gets that 24 channel T1 in there, you can do that too. Uh, routing and NAT support, so that's the data side. You can run your internet connection. You got your Ethernet port in right here. You've got the built-in switch, which is your essentially your Ethernet ports out that are all running inside of here. And you have your uplink where you can connect also micro-sized external switches to expand this up from the 8, which is the built-in, to up to 48 pho uh, phones. Uh, you also have VPN support. Up to 10 users can VPN into your business, and this is for remote access connections. And optional 802.11 wireless. You see a little, an little antenna popping up there. So argue with me, please. <laughs> no, no, don't do that. But tell me this isn't the ultimate all-in-one data device. I, every time I look at one of these, I'm just like, I so need to get one. And then I look at the price tag at 22 some hundred dollars and I think, well, maybe not. Because, you know, I have the, the bigger stuff that really does everything this does. It's just in bigger, louder, heat-generating, office-consuming, wiry systems. The UC500 does come in different versions, different sizes, and that's why we have this typical micro size one that we've grown accustomed to, and then a little larger size. Now, they do sell these guys with the 802.11 wireless antennas, if you want those as well. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll 
I'll let you look at the last graphic for that one because I can't draw a good antenna. We've got the uh, the WAN port here, which is designed fast to connect to connect to a cable modem or DSL provider. Uh, this is an expansion slot that this is what kind of an uplink where you can get that little mini switch up here that has eight ports. That's what lets this one double in size to 16 user. Got your music on hold jack, your FXS or FXO ports, whichever one you want to equip it with, and even an expansion slot right here. These are all your power over Ethernet switch ports where you can plug in your Cisco IP phones. And as you grow into the 32 slash 48 user configs, really you just grow in size. They've, they've got more equipment and size inside of there. Um, essentially the same, same device. It's just now you have more FXO, FXS ports that you have available. You can see this is one with an expansion lot slot thrown in there. And this one over here is even for a T1 module. This is a, a built-in T1 card, or some of them will allow you to add a VIC, uh, VWIC T1 interface right there. And uh, yeah, so this, these are the different versions of UC500 that you can get to custom fit just about any company. The goal of the UC500 was ease of configuration. So they created the Cisco configuration assistance to make things easier. You may have seen this configuration assistant. This is what it looks like down here. When, if you've ever bought one of the Express series switches, uh, I remember when I saw them, I was so excited because I thought I found a, sweet, a cheap switch. It was like the Cisco Catalyst Express. I think it was the 500 series. I think so. That, that's got to be what it is. The Express, not, it would be Express, not Express, uh, 500 series. And when I saw them, I, the price was like 100 or 200 bucks. And I was like, oh, sweet. Cisco Switch for, for 100 or 200 bucks, brand new. And I bought one for one of my clients. And I got it. And I, and I flipped it around. I was like, Where, where's the console port? Okay. Okay, what kind of joke is this? Where's the console port? There was no console port on it because the Express series of the uh, iOS switches, or not iOS, but Express series of Cisco switches, do not run the iOS. You actually, and it was, I, I'm not going to put them down because they ended up working out and I thought, eh, they're not too bad. Um, but you, you hold a button on the front of the switch and one of the, the ports on the switch will blink. It'll start blinking, blink, 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 blink. And you plug in a workstation or laptop to that port and then access it and this web GUI that looks very similar to this shows up and it will auto discover your network and this is uh, the configuration assistant you see with the UC500 and you've got your phones that are plugged in discovers the gateways and the switches and things like that and this gives you a unified kind of interface to configure any one of these uh, areas of the UC500. Now the goal for the UC500 was ease of configuration. So they want you to be able to do just about everything without having to tap into the iOS. So before we get into the voice configuration of the UC500, I, I thought I'd just download the uh, Cisco Network Assistant so you can see what it looks like in the the live interface. I just set it up to discover my miniature network that I have here and I actually have my network split into two major VLANs. Uh, this is one half of my network that I'm using right now. Uh, it just shows uh, Catalyst 3550 uh, switch, that's the core device. We've got the CME router that it discovered and the two IP phones and it discovered, well actually sorry that's that's not an IP phone, that is a uh, wireless access point. So it discovered all this just by me giving it the username and password for my 3550 and I can go on there and you know get a device view of the 3550 and and see I know we're kinda smooshed down here but see all the devices that are plugged in you know right click on it configure VLAN settings and all that kind of stuff to where you know we've got just it's like a GUI that we can uh, use to monitor you know the different devices configure the different devices using a GUI and it's pretty good um, if you can if you can sense the hesitation in my voice, the only reason why is because I'm not a GUI guy. I, I try to be, but I'm just not. I, I like the command line for the Cisco router. And, you know, I used to be, there you, There was a day when I was back in the Windows world, and I loved GUIs, and I loved Microsoft Management Console, and I loved, I loved a lot about GUIs. But once I got into Cisco and just lived in the iOS for a long time, you know, I became like one of those people I used to hate. Remember the, you know, if you're a Microsoft person, it's the Linux people. The Linux people are always like, oh, why do you use a GUI when you got the Linux command line? I always used to hate those people. Oh, man, I hate them. Now I've become one of them. Look at me. I'm a jerk. So, 
Where, where did that come from? So the voice configuration of the UC500, uh, this is where we are actually going, and I'm kind of comparing here. If you use this network assistance to uh, manage your UC500, you have this configuration, and you would have a section underneath there. You can see it over here on the side for telephony, and you can expand that and see voice. Now, the only reason I'm showing you these tabs is because this is your exam prep section. You've got to be familiar with what these tabs are all about. Uh, when you configure your voice, it will show you, you know, it's kind of grayed out here, but it shows your platform, what modules you have installed inside of there, the Unity Express module inside. And then down here, you have the option to configure it as a PBX or a key system. And this really is, do you want everybody to have unique extensions and be able to do inner office calling? Or do you want this to work like a key system to where all of the phone configurations are essentially identical? You have, you know, the same three lines on all three phones. As a matter of fact, uh, to be familiar with some of the terminology, they call it like a three by three configuration. If you've got three lines which map to your outside phone lines, and that maps to three phones that all have the same identical configuration, that's a three by three. Or if you have a, uh, you know, like a three by 10, that's, you know, 10 IP phones that all have the same three lines on them. As a side note, if you've ever been to In-N-Out Burger, uh, and and uh, In and Out Burger is like the best burger place ever. They have them in Arizona and California, that kind of stuff. Um, they they have a menu. It just says hamburger, cheeseburger. There's there's nothing else. But they have like secret code that you can tell them. Like I always order my hamburger animal style, and it's not on there. But they saute onions and and mushrooms. It's oh, it's awesome. But anyway, you can go to In and Out Burger and you can order like what do they call them? Like a, a four by four. And what they do, it, you just tell them I want a four by four, and they'll put four buns. They'll have a bun, a burger, a bun, a burger, a bun, a burger. You know, four stacks of these things. You could even do like a six by six if you're, if you're insane and want a heart attack the next day. So nothing to do with this at all. But, you know, if this were an in and out burger, a three by ten would actually be three buns and ten patties of, of beef in between them jump one tab over into the system parameters and this is where you ge configure general system settings like your language your locale you've got your date and time format uh, 24 or 12 hour format uh, the system message this will be what you want displayed on the bottom of the IP phones uh, I think I changed ours to um, I can't remember it, it, the default is Cisco Unified CME on uh, on CME on Call Manager Express and you can change that to your company name or whatever you'd like uh, and then down here you have speed dials these are company-wide speed dials it'll let you add up to it's some astronomical number like 10,000 uh, different speed dials that you can have on every IP phone just you know people can scroll through them and use them one more tab over and you're now into the network parameters again it's trying to do everything without the iOS although you have access to the iOS uh, you have the VLAN number that is going to be used for your network and right here is where you've got the uh, data VLAN and this is going to be the uh, DHCP IP address oh, sorry this is the voice VLAN that you're going to be using because this is the telephony section uh, and you've got the voice VLAN DHCP addresses I'm going to exclude from 1 to 10 and you know hand out everything else the CME IP address notice it doesn't say option 150 or TFTP server it says what is the CME IP address because it's all prettied up and you know you don't even need to know what option 150 is all about Shooting over to the AA and voicemail tab, this is where you have your auto attendant and voicemail settings. And the main thing that you're going to set here is the pilot numbers. Uh, the auto attendant extension is what number somebody would dial to get into the auto attendant function internally, meaning inside of the company, like, you know. 1505 or something assigned to that. Um, you have the auto attendant PSTN number, which is what somebody would dial from the PSTN to get to the auto attendant. You know, maybe 480, you know, 555, 1505, or or something like that. That's the full PSTN number, and it's the same thing down here with the voicemail extension and voicemail PSTN number. This is for users internally accessing voicemail. You know, this is your you know, we'll say 5,000 accesses voicemail internally, and 480-555-5000 accesses it externally from the PSTN. 
Um, you also have the auto attendant script if you want to select a script. Uh, by default, it runs some default script, which is just like, you know, welcome, this, you know, welcome to my company, you know, press one to dial by name and all that. Um, if, you know, you can choose different scripts if you have different ones configured on there uh, or downloaded into there to, you know, customize it and that sort of thing. But that configures auto attendant and voicemail. Now we jump over to the SIP trunk area. This tab is primarily used to create, well, it's used to create SIP trunks, but primarily to connect to something known as an ITSP. Whoops, ITSP. Uh, and I believe we talked about these earlier, when, uh, way early on in the series, when we talked about some of the new stuff with voice over IP. This is known as an internet telephony service provider. What you can do is now, instead of uh, getting a router, purchasing like T1 line to the PSTN carrier, you can actually go over the internet, and there's many ways that you can do this. You can get a VPN style connection and all that, to an ITSP, which allows you to use data networks to connect to the internet telephony service provider, and they can then connect you off to the PSTN. So you, you're, from your perspective, you are saying voice over IP end to end. Even when you call the PSTN, you're going over an IP connection. They're the one that's using all their resources to convert you off to the PSTN if that's necessary. Now, ITSPs have big advantages. They're usually a lot cheaper. You can get uh, better provisioning because you're not really getting a dedicated line that says, you know, this is my voice line, this is my data line. Essentially, this is your voice and data line. It's used for internet web surfing and for connecting to the ITSP. In that case, if you're setting up a, a trunk to them, you'll choose what service provider you have, and you'll at least have to put in the proxy server field. Uh, the SIP proxy server is the one that guides you. It's kind of the, the uh, you know, tel uh, telephone book of the network that says, okay, this is where you go for this number, this number, this number, and all that. And there's all kinds of different servers you can set up in the SIP world. If you need to authenticate, you can type in your authentication there, but that gets your SIP trunk running. The Voice Features tab is where you probably get the most action in uh, this, this GUI. This is where you can configure a lot of the features we talked about from the command line in the productivity nuggets of the series. Like Music on Hold, you've got Paging, where you can enable your paging groups and say, here are my different paging group numbers. Now, this is, this is primarily to enable the features. You'll have to then go to the individual phone configuration wizards. They have wizards like this for each phone and assign them to paging group 101 or whatever paging group you're doing. Um, you have you know, call pickup groups where you can uh, pick up other ringing phones. There's a caller ID block code, so if you want to dial out without somebody seeing your caller ID, you can. Um, outgoing call block number list. Remember the after hours restrictions? This is kind of a simpler version of that to put on restrictions. You've got intercom. You've got hunt groups to hunt through specific numbers anytime uh, something happens. And our call park slots uh, where we can park calls that are on hold. And conference information. How many maximum partitions, uh, participants can we have in an ad hoc, ad hoc, just on the fly conference? And what is the maximum number of conferences that we can support at a time? Those are a lot of times governed by the resources that you have on your UC device. If you want to create a dial plan for the PSTN in one minute or less, Here's how you do it. You can go through and first off define your system extensions. You know, what is your internal extensions? Are they three digits, four digits, that kind of thing. But then right here, outgoing call handling. You can say, what, what are you creating outgoing calls for? Either North America, you can see that's one big button, or other, where it kind of changes this and it allows you to define your own custom plan. Now, this, the UC500 has a built-in system that can create a dial plan for North America. You just need to tell it the number of digits in your area code, uh, local number digits, long distance calls, like for instance, I would be a 10 digit area here in Arizona. Uh, what digit you call for, for long distance calls, in this case a one, international calls, zero one one. Uh, what is the access code that you uh, define for getting an outside line, you know, somebody dials nine to get an outside line. Um, incoming call handling, when somebody dials in on an incoming call, uh, where do you want to route them to? We say the operator, and right here is where we type her number in. 
and you can route the calls into the operator and you can also configure direct inward dial where people can dial directly into extensions so the nice thing is the UC500 instead of us manually creating those dial peers Cisco doesn't want you to know what a dial peer even is if you use the UC500 they'll do it all for you by just typing in the required fields this last tab, I couldn't find a good screenshot for this users tab, but it's really self-explanatory. It's where you go in and assign users to the phone. You just say this is their first name, their last name, uh, their user account, and what phone number they have, and that that's what gives them a login for the phone and you know associates them with a voicemail box and caller ID information. All that is pulled from that user tab. That should give you a good idea of the UC500. Not only why this box is so amazing and, and uh, what, what it's designed to do, but also just what it looks like to set this up and what Cisco's goal was with using the Configuration Assistant, just kind of a point and click GUI, and that you know tab by tab by tab configuration of a lot of the stuff we saw how to do using the command line with Unity Express and, and Call Manager Express and working through that. So I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.